Babbage's dream takes the unlikely subject of the history of computers, uh, the life of a 19th century mathematician by the name of Charles Babbage, and programming terms. And you may think, how does that poetry? Um, I used to work as a computer games programmer, actually, for a number of years. And uh, it always struck me that there was a level of exhaustion that happened at the end of each day um, from coding all day long. And I'd come home and I'd try to write poetry and I'd be exhausted. And I couldn't write. And finally it dawned on me I was using the same, same part of the brain. That um, it was really all this creation with language, um, efficiency, and flexibility and innovation all coming together within a tight set of rules and ways to bend those same rules. So I'm going, to, I'm going to begin, I guess what I should say first is Babbage, Charles Babbage, 19th century mathematician. Um, he, uh, he's notable because he's remembered as the one who designed, partially built, but never finished what would have been the first computer. So he was 130 years ahead of his time. I don't know if we have any programmers or people that study computer science. We have a handful. Thank you. It's audience plants for tonight. <laughs> Go team. You know, for some of you, you will, and, and there's actually in this crowd tonight is someone that I worked with at, at uh, a job I had uh, when I first moved to LA. So I will actually read maybe one or two poems that tie back to our company experience. Um, but for now, I'll begin with, with uh, well, I'll begin with the poem that begins the book, which is appropriately titled, Begin. Someone dreams of fire in a field. In a cold house in the winter, your head is on the table, your mind busily constructing a machine. Something taps at the door, calls you out from the deep reverie of making and unmaking. The wood is dark and full of veins, Lost in its haze, you glimpse a shape through the thick trees of night and hear the distant sound of an engine moving, its pistons and gears heavy with shutters and sighs, how it seems that you've always heard it coming. Long before it appears, the embodied will of the earth set to flame, a metal desire, <clears throat> the semblance of an unknown name you've carried home with you unwittingly all night, your body singing, in the hallway mirror. Something stirs in the corner of your eye and you cannot say what it is, only that it grows like a wildfire in a storm that tastes of steam, that you would lay every number in the world on end, and still it would not be enough. The heavens opening wide their spiraling arms and the dark heart within yearning to pull everything back. Will you stand on the threshold believing 